الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله I thought this was a bit strange but also it shows that a lot of the youth in this day and age alhamd, are very inquisitive in relation to being meticulous about practicing their Islam. And when I was a new Muslim, we were definitely far from these types of questions. And I do believe that there's a balance. And what I mean is, as the ulama mentioned, la ifrat, uh, la ifrat wa la tafrit. That there is no being uh, lackadaisical and there is no being too extreme. You know, that being in the middle path. And the generation that I came up with, uh, was raised up in as far as my Islam, I would say that a lot of us were very lackadaisical. For us, because of the lack of knowledge and it was a different age than it is now with the internet and the access to knowledge and the access to students of knowledge and information that, you know, we were a lot more lax in our practice and in our understanding in our Islamic development. Whereas now youth are sometimes a bit overbearing about trying, when they're trying to know information that they want to, for example, you know, what scholar said this, what scholar said that, you know, sometimes, and it's beautiful to be Haris, but sometimes it's sufficient, the general evidence for something, for a hukum. And let's just look at exact um, example as was asked, the question was asked about swearing, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, I don't swear, but some of my friends do, and I would like to do Al-Amr bi Maruf and Nahi al-Munkar. But I can't find any evidence or any scholars mentioning that just saying the swear word in and of itself is haram. This Ahabat is an interesting question, and... I want to mention that Islam does not throw out common sense. I want to mention that Islam does not throw out common sense. That no doubt our religion comes from Wahi, from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And with that being the case, of course, we look at our itaqad, we take our itaqad from those sources. And we take our religion from those sources. And one of the principles that we find that the ulama mention, the ulama of Asul of Fiqh, they mention Al Ada Muhakkam, which means, or Muhakkama, that are the Orf or the custom has a place. In the shara, and I think many of the people don't understand this, and and I want to get into a little depth here. Habitifillah. So be bear with me. In that, many of the things in the shara that if you don't find something from the book of Allah, and you don't find something from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that specifies something and outlines it and details it, then the scholars, they return to, of course, the Arabic language to understand the context or to, you know, from the Arabic language, they, it helps them to uh, deduce a hukum, as well as the orf, meaning the custom. And a lot of us, especially in the West, that we don't really seem to understand that because a lot of times we believe we have to throw, out, throw away our culture. We believe we have to throw it totally away. But that's not true. And as long as it does not contradict the shara, then 
and there's no, so that means there's no clear nasus about it, and it doesn't go against the shara, then that uh, practice perhaps will be okay. There's no problem. And what I'm talking about more specific is so the common sense, I don't know a custom in the world that I'm familiar with from the East or the West that doesn't regard what we refer to as swear words toward in that particular custom as something good. So the shar forbids everything that is bad. Now from the point of a textual st uh, st standpoint, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ شَيْنْ أَثْقُلِ فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ وَالْفَهِشَ الْبَذِي The Prophet ﷺ said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. And verily Allah hates uh, wickedness and sinful speech. That right there, in its general form, the generality of the text, lets us know that anything that is considered, especially uh, with the, in the context of the shara as wicked speech, is unacceptable. Okay? You can look at that in the context of your, uh, and you'll find examples in, in the shara anyhow. And you can look at that in the context also of your particular custom. Would you feel comfortable in front of your parents saying what we consider a swear word, like the F word or the S word, even the S word, which is light. Lighter, anyway. I hear Muslims all the time, they make they say this, and it always surprises me because that wasn't my tarbiyah, especially as a Muslim. When I came into Islam, we, me, and most of the brothers that I know, we, even if we had other issues we had to deal with, but the tongue, the swearing, you know, the brothers that I, my core brothers that I was with, we didn't swear. And I have not, I don't swear. That, that's just not me. Even when I get very angry, bi'idnillah, you won't, I would have to be pretty extreme where I almost lose. Uh, so that's not a part of my custom is to curse. I would use another word to replace it. Okay. And so from the custom I don't think you would feel comfortable with saying that in front of your, your mom or your dad, or if you're in the UK, your mom, okay? You wouldn't feel comfortable by swearing and using those types of words, okay? And as we mentioned, the Prophet had said, so it doesn't have to be, oh, in Arabic, it, it, it's not a curse word. No, this is a, a, a wrong understanding, but the shara forbids everything that is mustakhbath that is wicked and that is distasteful and, and and so forth. And people's customs, they have a, a place. So that's that's not acceptable. You wouldn't do you wouldn't swear in any type of environment. If you especially if you were going to meet someone of importance, you would withdraw your tongue. And as we mentioned, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that Husnul Khulq is the heaviest thing uh, on, on a believer's scale. So that lets us, husnul khulq is comprehensive. That's a comprehensive term in that it comprises of every aspect, your, your adab ma'Allah, your manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning, you know, how you worship and, and, and how you are respectful in your duties with Allah azza wa jal, and your adab ma'khulq, your manners with the creation. All of that is a part of husnul khulq, and that means that which is considered good, that which the people would find happiness from you and find goodness from you, and it would cause a, a, a goodness in your heart. And as the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, also in that hadith, he mentioned he mentioned the 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 thing which is going to be heavy on the scale of the believers and is good. And he mentioned what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests in that hadith. He said, And verily Allah hates wicked, or wickedness, and this is wickedness, this is fahish. It could be physical fahish, or fahish of the tongue. It could be physical fahish, like zina, and things like this, and all kind of wickedness. You know, and, and, and it can also be the wickedness of the speech. 
But then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, When Allah Yubhidu al Fahishan Badi. And then he mentioned Al Badi. The the so this is in reference to the actual speech. So the wickedness in speech. And that is inclusive of the of the swearing and cursing people, making takfir of people, making tabdir of people without the right to do so, slandering people, backbiting people, all of those things that are sinful speech and sinfulness of the tongue are included in that, in, in its generality. And for further explanation, if you wish, go back to the explanation of Bulugh Maram, and if you know Arabic, go back to Ben Uthaymin's explanation, which is fantastic, but any of the shurahat, but that is something that we uh, studied, and you'll find it here on the YouTube, of uh, in depth going into Bulugh Maram, in the explanation of Bulugh Maram, the comprehensive chapter, and you'll hear an explanation of that hadith, and the intricacies that Imam bin Uthaymin, as he made his istanbat, you know, he deduced from the evidences and gave us some of that fiqh. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.